Thank you, President Trump. Thank you, President Trump. Thank you. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you all very much. No, thank you, sir. Great job. Thank you, Mr. President. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Can I shake your hand, sir? Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, President Trump. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, John. That's a great gesture. Thank you, First Lady. Thank you. Thank you, First Lady. Thank you. We love you. Thank you. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. This guy just got a better. Look. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, a couple hours ago. See, if Trump shakes your hand, there's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you all very much. Thank, thank you for coming. Thank you, thank you. Thank you darling. Good job. You thank you. Thank you. I love you, Ivanka. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever heard of you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Ivanka. Thank you, Jared. Uh, Jesse Rojas, uh, President of California for Accountability and uh, spokesperson for the Caution uh, Fraud Ahead campaign. We're right here in Irvine waiting for the uh, Gavin Newsom uh, Blue Bus Tour. In fact, Gavin Newsom just stopped to get something to eat. He should be heading back on the bus. The reason why we're doing this going around the state following his bus is because myself as a Hispanic immigrant who came to California from Mexico at the age of 11, I am deeply concerned for the current state of California. I personally and my parents did not come to this great country, immigrated from Mexico to see the current politicians such as Gavin Newsom and others uh, try to make California economically and socially like the very same country I ran away from. The battleground state of Florida has two high-profile elections this year. The Senate campaign, where Democratic incumbent Bill Nelson is in the political fight of his life against Governor Rick Scott. And then there is the gubernatorial race, which could not be closer. It's between former Republican Congressman Ron DeSantis and Andrew Gillum, the Democrat and mayor of Tallahassee. What we found in the Gillum campaign was just what we found in Missouri and Tennessee and Arizona, a candidate lying to the voters he needs to win the election. I will absolutely not raise taxes on everyday working Floridians to uh, uh, give access to what additional What about people. wealthier people? So what I said, uh, and I ran on this, by the way, is that we will increase taxes for, the, for corporations in our state. So what if, I mean, what if... Do you want to put all your eggs in one basket? What if it doesn't work out? What else would happen? How would he get money? So then none of the programs that, that you know people are hoping for would happen? Basically. Do voters know that? That's not for them to know. Huh? That's not for them to know. Remember I was saying? 
exactly Modern day fairy tales start with Once I am elected. <laughs> Omar Smith, paid by Florida's Democratic Party, works full-time in the Gillum campaign effort. His honesty is refreshing, especially when it comes to who the real Gillum is. And Smith should know, he went to college with Gillum. We went to college together. You did? Yeah. With him? Yeah. Oh, that's how you know him? Yeah. So Gillum is part of the crazy crazies? He is part of the crazy, crazy, crazy. But this Cliff Esserman, who works for the Broward County Democratic Party, agrees. But no, so what do you think, like, about, you know how, um, because Gillum, like, during the primary and everything, he was, like, Medicare for all, da 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 da, da. But then as soon as he won the primary, he, like, totally, like, stopped saying it. Yeah. Like, now he's because not that's saying normal. it. But why would he change it, though? Well, because in order to win, he had to be, he's really left the center. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm left the center. Yeah. So he was being left, not left the center. Just so I'm clear, because I was thinking about it again, he just can't say. I, I don't say he just can't say, but I do think he's not saying specifically, like, I'm going to ban bump stocks, or I'm going to come against ARs, only because he's running a race right now. I do think he was supporting anybody to do that stuff. Bill Nelson. I just wish. I can say it just because he's trying to get the moderates and the gun toting through the North Carolina. Is it progressive through and through? <laughs> through. Some of that is obviously like tactics to not like scare away because we need every vote. We need the people who are independent votes. We need more votes. We need everyone. But yeah. Okay, so he's just he's saying that to too. Yeah. like the yeah. crazy Republican Trump supporters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. I'm just curious what does Andrew Gillum tell those that are not progressives? How does he get them on board? Keep repeating the same story until it makes sense to them. Yeah, but he doesn't just go on the fly. I mean, he has to... You have your set target who believe your, your story. Everybody have... There's a campaign message for everybody. Smith has some very strong opinions about white Floridians. You have a governor, right? good. You got a black attorney general. That's good. Yeah. Now, the goal is to switch out your legislatures. So now the governor can so get he can do what that. he wants. The rules in Florida are f***ed up. <laughs> so tell me about it, man. All right? This is a f***ed bad state. Okay. It's a cracker state. Okay. Okay? Ask anybody outside of here. You go to Port St. Lucie, Orlando. Man, them crackers ain't gonna let us do that No, you crazy? You have to appeal to white guilt. All right, so how well, would you do that? Because that's white. what it is. That's what it is. Let me be clear. Omar Smith is not the villain here. He just happens to be the unwitting whistleblower. He seems to be a very politically savvy guy. He's actually quite honest in this video, which is very refreshing. And he makes it very clear that Gillum is selling a bill of goods he cannot deliver making promises to Florida voters that are simply unrealistic. Time after time, from Tennessee to Missouri to North Dakota to Arizona, the politicians we have exposed have no answers because our reporting is bulletproof. We stand by our reporting. Everything you see here is accurate. They will attack our methods. Claire McCaskill called it fraud. Kirsten Sinema said this week that we're criminals. They will attack our character. But if you watch these videos closely, they will never actually address and respond to the facts we've uncovered. Stay tuned. I'm James O'Keefe here in El Paso, Texas on the Mexico-United States border. Our latest investigation is on Beto O'Rourke and this one is a blockbuster. These videos you're about to see appear to show Beto's campaign workers and staff all the way up to his campaign manager, Jody Casey, knowingly using campaign resources and funds to help assist subsidize illegal aliens entering the United States. So there's like, a, you know, that migrant caravan. They just, a few of them got here already and they're dropping them off like really close to Missouri. Who? Um, oh, that, the Hondurans? Dominique Chacon is a field manager for the Beto O'Rourke Senate campaign in the campaign's headquarters in El Paso. He got the tip about the migrants and marshaled the campaign staff to act. Whether or not it was legal 
did not seem to concern him. So I'm going to go get some groceries and some blankets. Want to come with? Yeah, sure. I'm going to this one's bad, but like, mm-hmm. if we just say we're buying food for some event, like the Halloween events, because there's block walks coming up for Halloween. Okay, that's a horrible idea, but I didn't hear anything. There's actually stores that, that mark it as just food. They don't mark any... That's Anna Paula Thiemann, a field organizer for the O'Rourke campaign. Our attorney reviewed the video. Here is his professional assessment of Thiemann and the others lying about how campaign money would be spent. Quote, the material Project Veritas Action Fund captured shows campaign workers covering up the true nature of spending of campaign funds and intentionally misreporting them. This violates the FEC's rules against personal use and misreporting. It also violates Section 1001, making a false statement to the federal government. The FEC violations impose civil penalties, including fines of up to $10,000, or 200% of the funds involved. Violations of Section 1001 are criminal and include imprisonment of up to five years. I just hope nobody that's the wrong person finds out about this. Thiemann did the shopping with our journalist and then went to deliver the goods to the migrants. Hey Tom, I think um, we saw Jody. Hey. Was Jody there? Yeah, she just left for now. Yeah, I think there. Were- I just left too. Thiemann is talking about Jody Casey, the campaign manager for Beta O'Rourke. We wondered how much Jody Casey knew about what was going on. Who authorizes that, Heather or Jody? Jody. Jody. Yeah. I mean, Heather could, but it just went to Jody right away. Yeah. What did Jody think about the whole thing? She texts us afterwards. She was like, I'm so happy that we have a staff that, you know, gets it and is, was there. I was so happy to see all you all there and still working, still contributing. You know, we have the best, best team ever. Um, she thanked us for that. And I was like, well, thank you for letting us, you know, use these resources, you know, and just get this stuff done. Um, but yeah, she was, she, was, she was good about it. It certainly sounds like the plan is to use the various campaign resources to help the Honduran aliens and hope no one finds out. But it's also like, I just, like, for me, I can ignore the rules and I'll f- I don't mind breaking the rules and I can defend any position I can defend. I mean, like you said, you've already used the campaign. <laughs> For what else? Yeah. We're already, we're already yeah, at that point. I feel like it would be hard to pass. Mm-hmm. Um, only because I know, like, if, like, the FEC regulations, you know, you have to spend the money mm-hmm. to net votes and for the campaign and um, if you caught in like some sort of like you know violation that's like a fifty thousand dollar fine, this is what's gonna happen. Make sure it doesn't get out this way. Mm-hmm. If you're asked about it, you bought food for your 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 pop ups, you know. And if it ever escalates to like, oh, you know, this is wrong, you're like, oh, you know, what? talk to Dominic. He's the one who, who you know. Mm-hmm. Now earlier this morning, our journalist actually followed up with Jody Casey, campaign manager for Beta O'Rourke and asked her about this illegal use of campaign funds and money for the migrants. We think Jody's reaction is illuminating. It just made me really concerned, like, you know, because I know that we're using the, some of the campaign resources to help with the migrants, and, like, I just didn't want anyone to get in trouble with that. Like, I didn't want them to ask me any questions about people using resources. I'm going to show you this. Don't worry. Charity is not a bad thing. We support charity at Project Veritas Action, but you cannot break the law to do it. And that is a different matter. We have serious Section 1001 violations here and potential FEC violations. And if it's true that some of these immigrants were here illegally in this country and the Beto O'Rourke campaign helped those people use campaign resources, then Beto O'Rourke must respond before Election Day on Tuesday. Reporting from the Mexican-American border in El Paso, Texas, this is James O'Keefe with Project Veritas Action.